Hi, good afternoon. My name is Joanna Nelson and I am with the state of New Mexico's Economic Development Department. And thank you so much for joining us today. You've tuned in to one of our COVID-19 response webinar series. And today we are hosting a roundtable discussion with U.S. Senator Tom Udall. Before we get started, I'd like to address a few items. This presentation will be recorded. We will post this presentation on our YouTube channel. I have included the link to NMEDD's YouTube channel in the chat box. You can access that. Or we will be sending this link out to all registrants' email. So you will receive the link in your email this afternoon. As well, when you registered, we compiled all questions that were submitted, and we have uh, given that list to the Senator's office, as well as um, our Cabinet Secretary. I would like to introduce New Mexico Economic Development Department's Cabinet Secretary, Alicia Keys. Thank you, and thanks for hosting this, Joanna. Um, welcome to what I think is our 10th webinar um, hosted by the Economic Development Department since the governor's declaration of the COVID-19 health emergency. In doing these webinars, um, we're really trying to bring New Mexico companies experts from state and federal agencies, the business community, as well as financial industry in order to help you through this crisis. Today, we are honored to have U.S. Senator Tom Udall. The Senator serves on five Senate committees, Appropriations, Foreign Relations, Commerce, Indian Affairs, and Rules and Administration. He has worked on New Mexico's behalf since 1998. The Senator heard about our webinars and had his staff reach out to ask if he could participate. And this kind of collaboration and openness is really what makes New Mexico so wonderful. His staff is ready to work together and find solutions for economic development. So Senator, we can't thank you enough for joining us today. Well, it's a pleasure. Secretary Keyes, real pleasure to join you. Thank you. So as many people listening know, um, the $349 billion appropriated by Congress to the PPP um, program has already been allocated with thousands of businesses in New Mexico in line to receive a portion of that money. Um, there were some that were successful and there were some that were not. So what is next? And we've been hearing rumblings about another 450 billion. So the Senator is going to address that today um, and talk about some general issues at first and then we'll get to the questions. A bit of housekeeping, like Joanna said, at GoNM.biz is where we will be putting this recording afterwards. That's also where we have information about our coming webinars. We update it daily with all of the new federal programs, state programs, any grants we might hear about. Um, we also have our COVID-19 guarantee program. We've done um, we've done that deal with about 35 companies. So if you did not get the SBA funding, come and talk to us about that. We also have um, the LIDA 0% loan, which we've done um, with I think about 20 companies right now. So um, please look at our website and contact your regional representative. Um, the governor has also done a fantastic site. It's newmexico.gov. It has all of the health information and current and accurate information on COVID-19. So we would like to thank Joanna for doing this and also the Senator's staff, um, Jeff Lopez, Matt Miller, Cara Gilbert. Um, it's really, it's an amazing group of people to work with and I'm so proud to be involved um, you know, in New Mexico uh, with with the federal delegation and all of the other cabinet secretaries and our teams. So right now we're going to um, let the senator speak a little bit about the overview of crafting the CARES legislation and what went into that. Senator? Thank, uh, thank you so much and hello uh, to everyone and I really appreciate uh, Secretary Keyes, your involvement in this and trying to keep uh, the business community informed here in New Mexico. And I'd like to commend you and the governor 
for working so hard to meet the tremendous economic challenges brought about by this crisis. Before we start, I'd like to extend my thoughts and prayers to everyone impacted by this virus. It's hit very hard. My focus in the Senate has been on New Mexico workers, small businesses, vulnerable populations, and making sure our healthcare system and frontline healthcare workers have the resources they need to do their jobs and stay safe themselves. That's where I continue to keep my focus. I know folks are worried, not just about their own health, but about their ability to stay financially afloat. So I'm here to talk about what we've done in Congress so far to help and the work ahead. Let's, let's get to your overview that you were asking about, Madam Secretary. The CARES Act is a $2 trillion relief package, the largest ever passed by Congress. And just to give you a little comparison, in the financial meltdown and housing and all of that in 2008, 2009, the package passed by the Congress there was less than $1 trillion. So this is significantly more than double of what was done then. So I think that you can see the size of, of the impact of the coronavirus. I've um, worked hard to make sure this was a bill that put our state, workers, and small businesses first. It's not the end of our work, but it's a good start. It's a big, complex bill. But very broadly, it includes badly needed assistance for individuals, for hospitals, for state and local governments, and for tribes. And, and critically, the CARES Act provides major relief for small businesses, which is what you all would like to hear about. Small businesses, as you all know very well, power New Mexico's economy. Our state's more than 154,000 small businesses represent 99% of all businesses in the state and employ about 335,000 workers. Our goal was to put small business first. The Payment Protection Program is a centerpiece of the app. It's a $350 billion program that provides small business loans of up to $10 million. If a business keeps its employees until the end of this year, its loan is forgiven. Businesses and nonprofits with less than 500 employees are eligible. The Small Business Administration administers the program and local banks lend the funds. Loans are on a first come, first serve basis. As of last week, all funds have been committed. While all funds are obligated, all funds are not out the door and into the hands of businesses that need them. The administration's rollout and management of the PPP has had its difficulties. My office only got information on New Mexico loans for the first time last week. In total, 8,277 loans for New Mexico small businesses were approved for a total of over $1.4 billion. This puts New Mexico on track to receive a decent share of funding. But we don't have enough information about these loans. The entire New Mexico congressional delegation has been asking Secretary Mnuchin and the SBA administrator how many New Mexico loans have been dispersed, their geographic distribution, and whether businesses owned by underserved communities have equal access. There's no doubt Congress must resupply this fund and do it fast. But we also need to fix the issues that are plaguing it to make sure New Mexico businesses get their fair share. We must make sure a portion of the new funding goes through mission-based community lenders to underserved businesses that traditionally don't have easy access to capital. A second piece of the small business package is a $10 billion expansion of IDLE, the IDLE program, Economic Injury Disaster Program. This program provides emergency grants of up to $10,000 for small business and nonprofits to be dispersed within three days of applying. 
Idle was supposed to act as a backstop for small businesses before the payment protection program loans came through. But many small New Mexico businesses have been waiting for weeks for those loans. I'd been in direct contact with New Mexico's SBA director, John Garcia, about these problems. The, the New Mexico SBA office is working hard, but they are very understaffed to get this uh, uh, program up, rolling, and money out the door. Long, long story short, this bill has a lot of good resources for small businesses, but the administration needs to do better getting these resources out the door, and I'm pushing hard on that. So back to you, um, Secretary Keyes. Thank you, Senator. And we're going to get back to um, what's next and some additional funding that might be coming because a lot of our callers did submit, have not heard, or did hear and got rejected. So we, in a few minutes, will get to those questions. Real quickly, we wanted to ask about your, um, for an overview with regards to the money that is flowing to federal agencies in the CARES Act, like HUD or the USDA, how will that, what does that look like for New Mexico? How will that flow to New Mexicans? Okay, getting getting over $2 trillion out the door and into the field will be a first. But New Mexico communities and communities across the nation need the relief now, not weeks from now. Each federal agency has its own mechanisms and formulas for di disbursement, and it's very complex. But we are keeping a close watch on the implementation and have pushed federal agencies hard for expeditious and fair distribution of funds. New Mexico has already begun to see an influx of much needed COVID-19 relief funding. And we are all monitoring, monitoring our state's allocations very closely. Back to you, Madam Secretary. Thank you. Um, so the next question we have is about um, the Main Street program funding. This can be misleading for some New Mexicans because we have this really fabulous program um, called Main Street, but it sounds like this program is more for mid-sized businesses. Um, can you provide any insight on that? You bet, and you're absolutely right. The uh, Federal Reserve's Main Street Lending Program is for small and medium-sized businesses below 10,000 employees, and that includes businesses below 500 employees. This is also a monetary program created by the Fed and intended to support small and medium-sized businesses that were in good financial standing before the crisis by offering a four-year four -year loans of one million or more. The Fed is still working out details, but interest rates will likely be 2.5 to 4%. Like the PPP, this program is delivered through the banks and other lenders. It's not to be confused, as you said, Madam Secretary, with the New Mexico Main Street, your agency's program that helps revitalize downtowns. Okay, wonderful. So um, we will work with your office as soon as any information comes up on the Main Street program funding. Uh, we will put that on the economic development website so um, people can start accessing those funds. Um, in terms of federal money for communities, not necessarily specific businesses, but communities, Senator, um, what does the CARES legislation include? Okay. Despite some of the problems with the rollout, New Mexico is currently seeing money on the ground. I'll give you a few examples. Approximately 1,800 New Mexico healthcare providers will receive about $170 million to help stabilize and su sustain their operations. That money is already being electronically deposited into provider accounts. And separately, over $15 million has gone out to 16 community health centers, Pueblo Health Centers, and urban Indian organizations throughout the state. These frontline 
healthcare centers provide essential primary care services to underserved populations. The state will be receiving over $25 million in grants for 50 local airports to maintain critical operations and link supply chains. And New Mexico state government and local governments are set to receive over $133 million in emergency transit grants while New Mexico tribes will get almost $675,000 for public transportation systems. Adequate public transportation means essential workers can get to their jobs and strengthened transportation systems will serve us beyond this crisis. Back to you. Secretary Thank you, wow, that's fascinating. And Joanna and I just before this, were emailing back and forth about um, future, webinars we might do, and we talked about doing one for a tribal community, so we'll follow up with you on that, and also one in Spanish, um, because we knew we know that a lot of our a lot of our listeners are also Spanish speakers. So look for those um, coming up in the near future. So this is the question well, everybody a, wants. And that's oh, also that's also very important for our underserved communities, obviously. So please go ahead. Yes. Um, so Everybody is very interested in what is next. Um, we have heard rumors of $450 billion. Will that go back into the PPP program? Will smaller businesses potentially be better? Um, can, can they access that more easily? What is phase four and what, phase five? Is there any infrastructure in there? What are you seeing? You bet. Um, Congress's work is, is far from done. Congressional Democrats are pushing for a CARES Act II. I'm calling for a COVID-19 HEROES Fund in the next package that would give essential and frontline workers a $25,000 premium pay increase equivalent to a raise of $13 per hour from the start of the public health emergency until December 31st, 2020. It is also critical that we protect America's right to vote in the next package. We need to make it easier and safer for everyone to vote. But before that, we want an interim emergency relief package. Small businesses are the top priority. We want to see $250 billion for them, including $125 billion channeled through community-based lenders that serve women, minority and veteran-owned small businesses, farmers, and small businesses and nonprofits across the country. And we want to immediately infuse $100 billion more billion into our healthcare system, $150 billion to state and local governments, and significant monies for food security. Families must have food on the table. Um, it, this is a public health crisis, which is unprecedented. Priority number one for me is to make sure New Mexicans stay healthy and weather this storm financially. There are hundreds of stories throughout our state of New Mexicans pulling together, working together. I believe we can get through this crisis and come out stronger on the other end. Thank you. So when do you, I'm hearing rumors that there might be a vote on Wednesday. Do you know anything more? Yes, yes. The, 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 the discussion right now, and if, if any of you go out and search and start talking about the next package, if you search on the internet, you, you will find that from all of my, I'm telling you where we are right now, things can change, but, but we're very close to a deal, which will mean that will be finalized in writing and may be voted on tomorrow. It could be voted on by the end of the week. It hasn't quite reached that point yet, but it looks like uh, this deal, the outline of it, and these aren't solid numbers because we don't know till we pin that down, but we're talking about $310 billion in uh, PPP, uh, $50 billion more into the uh, EIDL program, that economic impact, uh, impact the, the impact loans. Mm -hmm. uh, another $75 billion for hospitals and $25 billion to increase testing capacity. So the, the priorities I mentioned 
before you ask this last question here, we're still pushing for those. And the expectation is, as you can see, if you were comparing the two, uh, state and local government uh, are not in the package that, that they're talking about right now. We're still pushing to get them in there. And, mm -hmm. and there could be a change near the end uh, that allows that to happen. But that's the outline right now from my visitation with the leaders, with the key leaders on the committees that, that have jurisdiction over this. And so that's where we are right now, which we, that will be very encouraging if we could get a package out of the Senate this week, get it out of the House by the end of the week and up there with the president signing it. And then once again, uh, start getting those monies out the door. Great, that's nice to hear. Um, let's move on to a few of our listeners' questions. Um, here's one. What assistance will be available for small municipalities? Yeah, let, let me start with what's been done already. The CARES Act included $150 billion for the coronavirus relief fund to assist state and local governments. Uh, Democrats fought hard to increase this amount. We agreed to a compromise that funds would have to be used for the response to the coronavirus. Some of the $125 billion available to New Mexico will go directly from the Treasury to local governments with more than 500,000 population, which in New Mexico, as most people know, is just Bernalillo County and the city of Albuquerque. The rest of the money will first go to the state and then to smaller municipalities. Now, I'll talk about what we're trying to do. Senate Democrats have been fighting to increase support for local governments as part of a potential agreement to increase funding for PPP. And that's what I just discussed in the, in the last answer. First, our plan would provide an additional $150 billion and a portion of the new funding would be delivered directly to local municipalities based on a pre-existing formula, the Community Development Block Grant Formula in this particular case. Our plan would also allow the initial $150 billion appropriated in the CARES Act to be used to replace municipalities' lost revenue. Now, as everybody knows, we, we being a oil and gas state, we have strong exploration, we have strong production. A lot of our revenue at the state level and some at the local level um, is, is in oil and gas. And our state uh, budget over the years, you know, has currently about 20 to 30, 40 percent is, is oil and gas. In the past, historically, you go back a little bit, 50 percent of the state revenue was from oil and gas. So what we're seeing today with the, the crash in the price of oil and it going into the negative sector is a, is a real stunning shock to the system. And so that's why we're arguing that these, the, these local governments and state governments, which are going to be deprived of revenue um, because of this crash in the price of oil, should be given assistance to help with the deficits. As you've probably heard, the governor is talking at some point, I think this summer, of bringing back the New Mexico legislature in order to deal with the deficits. Uh, so, and I think that's been estimated in the range of, of $1.5 uh, billion out of a, a state budget, which is roughly $7 billion. So you can see there's some big changes going on in New Mexico, and, and we're doing everything we can to try to get federal resources to help that. These resources I'm talking about, if they don't get in this package, they'll probably be in the next package, which I imagine would be sometime in the month of May. Okay, great. Um, we have our next question, um, which is close to my heart. This woman is a self-employed jewelry artist, and her income has been severely impacted. The galleries are closed. 
Any relief avail available for artists? We, they, and this is really talking about the creative economy in New Mexico, which is uh, one in 10 jobs, either direct or indirect, with more artists per capita than any other state. New Mexico is home to one of the most vibrant arts communities in the nation. And our artists play a key role in shaping our culture, attracting tourists and creating jobs. In our response to COVID-19, we need to ensure that artistic entrepreneurs have the support they need to expand our creative economy and create jobs. As the lead Democrat on the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee over arts funding, I successfully fought for a $150 million increase for the National Endowment of the Arts and Humanities. That will help New Mexico artists, which in turn will help our economy. There is a misconception that the arts aren't related to economic growth, but in New Mexico, that couldn't be further from the truth. Also, as you know, many artists and creative professionals are not typical employees. Many are self-employed. That's why we fought to expand unemployment assistance to include self-employed workers and why we made PPP available to sole proprietors. Back to you, Madam Secretary. Thank you. And just um, so people know, I believe that that will be, um, I emailed Secretary Bill McCamley this morning from Workforce just to check on that. And I think that they will have the website up and running by um, later this week. I know that he's had um, a lot of difficulty with that website and just the amount of traffic on it. So um, please, we will post on social media and also on our website um, when that is available. And, you know, in terms of diversifying the economy, that is one of our um, that is one of our big pushes at the Economic Development Department. And we are seeing, um, I know at least in the film and television sector, and the Senator and I were speaking about this before, that's probably going to be uh, one of the sectors that bounces back the quickest, primarily because it's a lot of money from out of state that's going to be flowing in. In addition to, we're seeing a lot of companies that don't necessarily want to be in Los Angeles or New York anymore and are for the first time looking at New Mexico. So I would say everybody keep your eyes on that. Um, in terms of, okay, let's see our third question. Um, so what more can be done to help small singer, single proprietors and businesses with under five to 10 employees, Senator? I, I already mentioned the um, enhanced unemployment and the PPP. Unfortunately, sole proprietors were only allowed to apply for PPP a full week after other small businesses. And as the funding was largely first come, first serve, that meant many of New Mexico's smaller businesses and sole proprietors lost out in this first round. So what uh, Senate Democrats are fighting to do is set aside a portion of the additional funds for small community-based lenders. New Mexico small banks and credit unions and our CDFIs and minority depository institutions certified development corporations and micro lenders. These are our lenders that know New Mexico the best and serve some of our smallest businesses that are arguably the most at risk in this economic crisis. And we actually, Senator, have been keeping a list on our website of some of the lenders um, that are being the most active with uh, with our New Mexico businesses. So for any businesses out there um, that haven't been able to match up with a lender, please check out our website. Um, call or email Joanna, she can help you out with that. Um, our fourth question is, and this might be more of a banking question, more of a small business question. When will specific guidance be provided for how to determine the forgiveness under PPP? Yeah, that good question, right. Um, Paycheck Protection Program, PPP loans are loans in name, but they can be 
100% forgiven if certain conditions are met. Congress's intent was to encourage businesses to keep workers on the payroll. So if a payroll is close to what it was at the beginning of the crisis, the loans would be forgiven and effectively converted into grants. The details are important here, and I've urged the SBA and the Treasury Department to release details as soon as possible on what will be required for loans to be forgiven. But we know the broad, um, the broad statement in the law, which is that if you maintain the same number of workers, 90% or more, that um, you, you, it will turn into a grant from a loan. Okay, good to know. Um, we are getting quite a few questions about food insecurity and food banks. I would um, just urge everyone to go to newmexico.gov. Um, there is assistance there. Also, if you want to reach out to um, anyone from the Economic Development Department or our hotliners who are answering, we have five people who are dedicated to answering our hotline each day, reach out to those people and they will um, give you um, links in order to, um, for food banks around New Mexico. Okay. And, and Madam Secretary, okay. before you go to the next question, as you know, many of those food banks are part of the federal commodities program. So uh, one of the things that happens at the federal the level through the Department of Agriculture is to give actual commodities uh, that are designated in the law over to the food banks. And I've been to several food banks where I've seen that program working and it kind of supplements everything that, our, that people in our communities are doing. For example, on food banks, you will see uh, local businesses, uh, grocery stores, others uh, get, donate to food banks. You have people donating money to food banks. So the food banks get it from different sources. So there's also some federal input there. Please thank go you. ahead, thank Madam you Secretary. That. Yes, thank you for that. Um, okay, our next question is, why are all the big businesses getting all the financial help and the small businesses are not getting funding or low interest loans? It, every uh, stimulus we enact, needs to be focused on the workers and the most vulnerable folks who will be hit the hardest. We cannot prioritize relief for big corporations. Most of the benefits need to go directly to workers who are at the most at risk. Economic relief should be focused on keeping workers and their families in their homes with enough support to meet their daily needs. Any economic relief should flow to workers and their families not CEOs and shareholders. And that is how we successfully fought to increase support for small businesses, unemployed workers, and our, and our federal nutrition, housing, and health programs, which are really our safety net. And that will help those most in need. And of course, have, as I've said, and it's clear looking at this situation, we need to do more and that's why we have this package, hopefully we'll pass this week and we'll get to work and probably do another one in May. Thank you. Okay, great. I just had to mute myself there for a second. Uh, we're moving on to our uh, next question, which is um, on individual stimulus. Will there be another individual stimulus for two to three payments to ensure we can make it until tourism returns? Yeah, very, very good question. The, the individual payments from the CARES Act are just the beginning to go out. That's the $1,200 per adult and $500 per child that phase out for higher income families. It's a one-time payment to nearly everyone in the United States. Before the CARES Act, I supported a proposal from Senator Bennett of Colorado that would have provided 2,000 in that initial payment, then a $1,500 payment for the public health emergency 
if it continues into July and another thousand every three months if the economy continues to struggle. And I support getting money into the hands of families that need it and best understand their family needs. We should absolutely look at additional relief measures, but I just want to underscore that the individual payments are not only the, are not the only support offered by the CARES Act. And, and understand, I think what, what Congress is doing in these additional packages is, is trying to monitor what is going on. I've already heard of, of some people in New Mexico and some people across the country getting their uh, $1,200 payments. So those are going out and uh, they've started it up a little late, but I think they're going to start rolling now with that. That's good news for everyone. I will have to say um, the tenor of the phone calls that we've been getting through the Economic De Development Department has definitely changed over the last week, and there is a lot of desperation out there, um, especially for people who didn't or who haven't heard back on PPP or IDLE. Um, and so kind of on that question, and I don't know, maybe one of your staffers could also help because I don't know the, the answer to this, but we are having a lot of questions which are, how do I check on my status of IDLE? Um, if I didn't get it the first time, do I apply again? Um, do I just stay tight with, you know, the lender that I have already? Um, do you or maybe Jeff have any, um, have you had any conversations with the SBA um, for guidance on what companies should do that have applied, that didn't get it? Do they apply again? How does that work? Sure, you bet. Well, first of all, in a general way, and then I'm gonna call on Jeff because I think he has some updated information here. I think it's, it's important that the work you've done already in terms of putting in your application, making contact. Many uh, small business people have a bank they already deal through with these lending uh, situations. So it's important they stay in touch uh, with the bank uh, and uh, see. So, so here's the kind of rough timetable. You know that we may have a deal this week. Keep an eye on that. When the deal is consumed and passed the Senate and the House and the President signs it, it's at that point that the money gets into the federal government executive branch and gets pushed out to banks. And then when the banks get it, that's when they open up. So that's kind of the rough timeline to see and to monitor. And, and I've had the same question asked too, to me, a number of times with calls of saying, we want to know when the banks open up. And so, Jeff, I'm going to turn to you for additional information there, because as we talked before this, um, I think you know a few extra things there. Thank you, Senator. And what you said is exactly correct when it comes to the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, businesses should keep in close contact with their lenders um, about the status of that loan. Um, when it comes to the IDLE, uh, the Emergency uh, uh, Disaster Loan Program, um, those are directly through the SBA. I know that SBA New Mexico is working hard to make sure that those loans go out when they're available. Uh, my understanding is that the EIDL program also um, exhausted their funds around the same time as the PPP. Um, but as the Senator mentioned, um, the legislation being debated uh, this week will also inc uh, include increased funding for EIDL. Um, so reach out to SBA on the status of your EIDL funds. Also the Small Business Development Center Network in New Mexico is a great resource to, to help get answers. And the Senator's office and uh, myself and his staff are ready to assist whenever a constituent has an issue with a federal program or a federal agency. Um, you can contact us at tomudall.senate.gov and we can uh, help answer your questions and make sure you get um, responses from federal programs. Great, thanks for that, Jeff. And as Jeff said, um, the SBDC is a fantastic resource. They have um, 19 offices around the state. They are there answering phones in person. They also have seminars that they do, I think, twice a week. So if you haven't applied, go ahead and apply. Go ahead and reach out to them um, for assistance in that because we know that sometimes applying for these programs is confusing. So they are really there to help you. Um, 
I'd also like to just remind everyone uh, that we put our hotline number um, in the chat box. So please reach out to us if you need any help whatsoever. Um, we have people there answering the phone to try to get you to the right place or try to give get you an answer right away. Senator, we cannot thank you enough as my dogs can as my dogs first start to bark. Um, was there anything else you wanted? <laughs> they were really good the whole webinar until now. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add before we sign off? Well, just let me um, thank you and and thank all of the uh, business people in New Mexico, small business people in New Mexico. We we really know and understand what an important role you play. Uh, it's it's those paychecks from businesses that, that keep people going, that support their families, that allow them to do all the productive things that they do in their lives. And so we really appreciate all of your uh, hard work and your your forbearance and understanding here in these difficult times and and my office is open to hear comments uh, we we can the reason i think it's good to do several of these legislative packages at the national level is we need to get feedback on how it's working because if it isn't working in uh, a circumstance, and we learn that from New Mexico business folks, we're going to go back and say, you know, this isn't working. Let's change it. Let's try something else. Let's do this a little bit differently. And I think having a package uh, come up hopefully this week and get it done, and another one coming up in May, we'll be able to make those self-corrections. So thank you very much, and thank you, Secretary Keyes and Joanna. Thank you for everything uh, you've done to help us out with getting out the word on these things. Well, we will continue to collaborate with your office. And um, I just had a text from one of the SBA directors in DC who was listening um, and he heard some of our concerns. So um, once again, an amazing, these times are amazing in the sense that we are so far apart but we are also just so connected. So thank you again. And um, we will get all of the information out as it rolls out and work with your office to get New Mexicans, um, you know, the financial assistance that they need. So thank you for making the time. Thank you. You take care. You too. Stay safe. Bye-bye.